Hello everyone. Welcome to Cisco Support Community. I am Rajesh from the Cisco Support Group. As promised in my last video, today we will learn about one of the most important processes that happens in a Cisco Unified Wireless LAN. We will understand how the integral components of the Cisco Wireless Solution, the lightweight access point and the wireless LAN controllers talk to each other and establish communication before they start servicing wireless clients. This is called the lightweight access point registration process. Access points are broadly classified into two types. We have the standalone APs, also known as the autonomous APs or the distributed APs. And we have the centralized APs, thin APs, more commonly known as the lightweight access points. In a Cisco Unified Wireless Network, we use lightweight access points. The lightweight access points are zero touch deployed and no individual configuration of access points is required. They have to first discover controllers and register with them before they can start servicing wireless clients. Let us now look at the wireless LAN controller discovery process. The lightweight access point registration process is a four step process. First, the AP needs to get an IP address. Next, the access point needs to find candidate controllers to which it can register. The third step is to select a controller from the list of candidate controllers. And the final step is to register with the wireless LAN controller. Let us now see how the lightweight access point accomplishes these steps and completes the registration process. Once the lightweight access point boots up, the first thing it does is look for an IP address, assuming we have an out-of-the-box lightweight access point. It sends a DHCP discover message hoping to hear from DHCP servers in the network. DHCP servers which receive the DHCP discover respond and provide an IP address. Optionally, the DHCP server can also be configured to return other information as we'll see shortly. Alright, our lightweight access point has received an IP address from the DHCP server. Next, it needs to find controllers to which it can register. For this, the access point uses the wireless LAN controller hunting algorithm. Let us now see how the wireless LAN controller hunting algorithm works. The hunting algorithm supports two types of controller discovery. Layer 2 discovery and layer 3 discovery. Layer 2 discovery is supported only on few of the older platforms of controllers and access points using LWAP. CAPWAP does not support layer 2 discovery. Layer 3 discovery is supported on all platforms either with LWAP or CAPWAP. The way the hunting algorithm works is, if layer 2 discovery is supported, the access point sends a discovery request in an Ethernet broadcast. If the AP does not find any controller using this method, or if layer 2 discovery is not supported, the AP proceeds to layer 3 discovery. And if the AP does not find controllers using layer 3 discovery, it reboots and starts all over again. Let us now look at layer 3 discovery methods in detail. As discussed, the lightweight access points use the layer 3 discovery algorithm if layer 2 discovery method is not supported or if layer 2 discovery method fails. The layer 3 discovery algorithm uses different options in order to discover controllers and to build a controller list. Let us now look at the various options by which layer 3 discovery is done. First, the access point broadcasts a layer 3 discovery message on its local IP subnet. Any wireless LAN controller configured for layer 3 mode that is connected to the local IP subnet will receive the layer 3 discovery message and reply with the unicast discovery response to the access point. Next, when a feature called over-the-air provisioning is enabled on a controller, access points that are already joined to the controller advertise their known controller IP addresses in neighbor messages that are sent over the air. New access points attempting to discover controllers receive these messages and then unicast a discovery request to each controller. Controllers receiving the discovery request unicast a discovery response to the access point. Access points also maintain previously learned controller IP addresses locally in its NVRAM. They use these IP addresses and send a unicast discovery request to each of the controller addresses. Any controller which receives the discovery request responds by sending a discovery response to the access point. The next one is an interesting one. The DHCP servers can be programmed to return controller IP addresses in vendor specific option, option 4 to 3, in the DHCP offer of the lightweight access points. When an access point gets an IP address via DHCP, it looks for controller IP addresses in option 4 to 3 field in the DHCP offer. The access point will send a unicast discovery request to each controller IP address listed in option 4 to 3. 
Again, the control is receiving the discovery request, unicast a discovery response to the access point. And last, the access point will attempt to resolve the DNS name cisco-lwap-controller.local domain. When the access point is able to resolve this name to one or more IP addresses, the access point sends a unicast discovery request message to the resolved IP addresses. Each controller receiving the discovery request replies with a discovery response to the access points. The layer 3 discovery algorithm repeats until at least one controller is found. During the layer 3 wireless LAN controller discovery, the access point always completes all the steps that we have discussed in order to build a list of candidate controllers. After the access point has completed the discovery step, the access point selects a controller from the candidate list using a selection algorithm, which we will be seeing in the next slide. The discovery response message sent by a controller in reply to a lightweight access point contains certain important parameters which is used in the controller selection process. Some of these parameters include the controller sysname, which is the hostname of the controller, the controller type, which defines the platform of the controller, the controller's AP capacity and its current load, the master controller flag, and the AP manager IP address. Let's now see how the selection algorithm uses some of these parameters for controller selection. Alright, we are all set to select the best controller from the list of candidate controllers using the wireless LAN controller selection algorithm. The lightweight access points use three criteria to select the best controller. If the access point has been previously configured with a primary, secondary or a tertiary controller, the access point will attempt to join these first. If not, it will attempt to join a controller configured as a master controller. If both these criteria fail, the access point will join a controller with the greatest access capacity. Now that we have selected a controller using the selection algorithm, we move on to the join process. After the access point selects a controller, the access point sends a join request to the wireless LAN controller. In the join request, the access point embeds a digitally signed X.509 certificate. When the certificate is validated, the controller sends a join response in order to indicate to the lab that it is successfully joined to the controller. Controller also embeds its own digitally signed X.509 certificate in the joint response that the access point must validate. After the access point validates the certificate, the joint process is complete. We are now in the final step of completing the registration process of the access point with the wireless LAN controller. In the post join process, the access point downloads firmware from the controller if it's running a code version which does not match with the controller. After syncing up the firmware versions between the controller and the access point, the controller provisions the access point with appropriate SSID, security, QoS and other parameters that have been configured on the controller. Once this is done, the access point is ready to serve wireless LAN clients and this completes the registration process. Now the access point is registered with the wireless LAN controller. I hope the information provided in this video was useful. Do post your comments and feedbacks on what kind of videos you would like to see on the Cisco support community. Thank you.